Color grading plugins like Chromatic and Color Finale are very popular, but are they still worth it now that Final Cut Pro 10 has so many color tools? Welcome to More Film Academy, product review series. Today we talk about Chromatic by Cormelt and Color Finale 2 by Colortrix, and we compare them to the built-in color tools in Final Cut Pro 10. My conclusion is that if and only if you do a lot of advanced color grading and you do not want to work with an external software like DaVinci Resolve, which is free, then these plugins might be worth it for you. The added features like advanced masking and motion tracking, as well as the easier workflow, made them an upgrade to the built-in Final Cut Pro 10 tools and are what makes them worth the price. I really loved both plugins, but personally, I would go with Color Finale over Chromatic. I find that it has a better workflow and a few more customizable features compared to Chromatic, but it's a very close call and I do really like both of them. Now, let's get to the details. First, an overview of what Final Cut Pro 10 includes. It has has the color board, which is not very popular, but I actually really like. It also has RGB and HSL curves, as well as masking with keyframe animation, color masking, log footage tools, LUTs, comparison viewer, and you can also get a free adjustment layer tool. Chromatic and Color Finale work a bit differently. Both of them come as an effect in Final Cut Pro 10. Both open up a window with basic options in the inspector, but also have a button to open a floating window with all the advanced options. We'll come back to that later. In the inspector window, with both plugins, you start with log footage tools made to convert your log clips like Sony S-Log or Canon C-Log to a different color space like Rec. 709. Chromatic gives you a few log exposure tools then a list of the supported log types. In Color Finale, you can choose to automatically detect the type of log or choose the log profile and output space of your choice. I find this to be a bit better design and offers more flexibility. I find both to be better than the option in Final Cut Pro 10, which is not even with the color tools. That said, they all work well. Next, Color Finale has the complete white balance tools right here, which I love. You have the automatic white balance, the color picker, temperature, tint, and saturation, all in the inspector. I find this much better than in Chromatic, where you need to open multiple windows just to do this. And it's also nicer than in Final Cut, where it's a few clicks to get to that. I think it should be included in Final Cut's color panel. Gray groups allow you to apply the same gray to several shots in the same category. You could, for example, put all your outside shots or even all your S-Hog shots in the same group and apply your universal grade to all of them. You can then make adjustments that will automatically update to all the clips in the same group. This is a bit like adjustment layers, but these clips don't have to be next to each other. Color Finale also has this feature. They call it sync groups. Both work in a similar way. However, I do find the groups in Chromatic to be a bit better for one simple reason. You can assign clips to groups, but you can also make individual adjustments to each one of them. For some reason, in Color Finale, you can't do that. If you assign a clip to a group and you try to make an individual adjustment, it doesn't work. Overall, groups are a fantastic addition to the color tools. This is a great feature that Final Cut does not have built in and is definitely very useful. Both plugins have sliders for overall basic exposure adjustments, which can be useful because you don't need to open the advanced floating window. Illegal colors is a nice feature. It makes sure the highlights and the blacks stay within the broadcast TV legal limits. This is something Final Cut can already do, but it's nice to have it here instead of buried in the effects library. Color Finale just uses the one included in Final Cut. This next feature in Color Finale is very useful. It's like the copy and paste attributes in Final Cut, but a bit better. Chromatic just uses the one included in Final Cut. That that said, Chromatic also has the Save Adjustments option in the Advanced panel. This is just a way to save any settings you put in a layer so you can later apply them to any other layers of the same type. I find this to be very useful. Color Finale can also do something similar by simply duplicating the layer. Color Finale can activate false colors to quickly see the exposure of the image. This is similar to the Final Cut Pro 10 range check feature, but with a bit more details. Color Finale also has this incredible feature called Isolate. This is simply to select a portion of the image to analyze. It gives you values at the bottom, and when you click and hold, the scopes only analyze this part of the image. This is much quicker than the crop option used to do this in Final Cut Pro 10. The only thing missing would be that it auto-adjusts the scopes without having to hold down the mouse, because this prevents you from doing adjustments at the same time. The color chart tools works with x right color charts to balance your colors as well as match different shots. Color Finale supports two charts from x right and Chromatic only one. Unfortunately, I don't have any of them. This is from Data Color, and so I could not test it. 
There's also an option for charts presets, but I couldn't figure out how it works. I think it's to upload other color charts, but I couldn't find any information on this, nor any charts to upload. Let me know in the comments if you know how it works. Another simple feature in the inspector is the sharpness slider, which is nice to have here instead of in the effects library. You also have film emulation, which adds film grain. Chromatic has that as well, but through the effects library like Final Cut does. So overall, Color Finale's inspector panel is much more feature rich. I do prefer that over Chromatic which puts most of these options in the floating panel. This is less efficient and takes up more working space. Now let's get to the advanced features. Both plugins have their more advanced grading tools in these floating panels. In Chromatic, you get 9 types of color grading panels. In Color Finale, you get 4. But that's only because they consolidate them more and also put more features in the inspector window instead of here, which I prefer. So first up in Chromatic is the left gamma gain panel. This gives you exposure and RGB color controls in the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights. The next panel, low, mids, highs, does the same thing, but with color wheels instead of sliders. In Color Finale, they merge both of these panels into the same one, which I find to be a cleaner and more efficient option. Also, Color Finale adds the extra feature of a color picker to each wheel. The other two can't do that. As mentioned before, Chromatic puts the white balance controls in the advanced floating panel, which I found less practical than in the inspector. On top of that, they put the controls in two separate panels, the auto white balance panel and the color balance EV panel. I find this to be badly designed, but it does still work. You have the option of picking a white area or using the scene analysis to do it automatically. In my testing, the scene analysis did not work very well, but maybe it just did not use it right. In any case, I find both the white picker and the scene analysis a bit slow and buggy compared to Color Finale and Final Cut Pro 10. You also have the auto adjust brightness option, which takes the white part of the image and brings its brightness to 100 RRE. This can save you a second or two, but I don't find it very useful. The X-Ray color chart option is also found in this panel. The next panel is the classic RGB curves, which work as expected. Color Finale has the same thing, although again, I do find that Color Finale has a cleaner, more efficient design by putting all the curves in the same view. Final Cut gives you both viewing options. In this panel, both Chromatic and Color Finale have a color picker. Color Finale has the classic eyedropper tool, but Chromatic lets you simply click on the image as well as drag it to adjust the curve. This is a nice feature, although I do find it has a few bugs. HSL curves are pretty much the same on all three options. Color Finale does add a few more controls with different curve options to fine tune the adjustments, but I didn't notice much difference. LAB curves are like RGB, but affect the LAB color space. This is a great tool to really fine tune the color adjustments without affecting the exposure. Color Finale has the six vectors panel, which is not exactly the same, but seems to target the same colors, so I would say it's the equivalent. I would say that Chromatic has the better option here, and Final Cut doesn't even have this option. The Replace Color Panel in Chromatic is probably my favorite one and is something Color Finale and Final Cut don't have. This feature is a great way to isolate a color and remap it to another one. It's also great to adjust incorrect colors like skin tones. Overall, it works great and I wish the other softwares had it. The last tab in Chromatic is Color LUT. It simply gives you access to the LUT library. Presets are a way to save the color grading adjustments you made, so you can later try out different ones or copy them to different clips. Final Cut has the Save Preset option, which is well made and works perfectly. You can save everything with it. In Chromatic, they call it Stacks. Stacks can be saved in different categories to better organize them. They simply save all your settings and layers, all except for the masking options. Since they're in the inspector window, you can't actually save them in stacks, which is a big problem. You can, however, use the Final Cut Save Preset option to save everything, including what's in the advanced panel and even the tracking data. Color Finale does allow you to save everything in its own preset options as well as final cuts. Both Chromatic and Color Finale can also create and export LUTs. You can save them in a library and then easily apply them to other clips or even other projects. Final Cut sort of creates the equivalent of LUTs by saving presets. But the only thing I don't like about that is that it can easily get lost in all your effects. It would be nice to have a better way to organize effects in Final Cut. Chromatic also comes with a few more LUT tools, which are simply different ways to apply LUTs and customize them. I find masking to be a very important and useful aspect of color grading. In Final Cut, it works great, but lacks a bit of flexibility and doesn't have motion tracking. That said, I find that in a lot of cases, animating the mask with keyframes is more than enough. 
I would say that motion tracking really comes in handy when there's a lot of movement on a longer clip. It saves you time and is more precise. That's where chromatic and color finale come in. In chromatic, the masking options are in the inspector window. When you turn it on, you get the masking controls directly over the image. You get shape mask, freehand, polygons, and more. Above all, all these masks can be motion tracked using Mocha technology. This is incredible. I don't think color finale uses Mocha, but I find it works pretty much just as well. Final Cut also gives its masking options to both plugins. All three software offer the very useful feature to grade inside and outside the mask. Final Cut lets you choose between inside, outside, add, subtract, and intersect. But to color grade for everything, you need to add a new color effect. In Chromatic, there's a really nice drop down menu in the advanced panel to choose between these options. It's quick and simple. However, you can only add one mask at a time. This is ridiculous. The only way to add more masks is to add more chromatic effects. This becomes cumbersome and not very practical. In color finale, you can really see all the actual power of masking. It has so many masking features. You have all the same things as chromatic, but they also add a very useful edge mask as well as image mask. You can also create folders, add a mask to any layer, and add as many as you want. One thing I'm not a big fan of, however, is how they handle grading inside and outside of a mask. I find it a bit complex. While in chromatic, you simply choose the option in the drop down menu. In color finale, you have to create folders. It does still work, and it can definitely give you more flexibility. I just find it a bit too complex. I wish it had this functionality as well as a simple option like in Chromatic and Final Cut. Chromatic comes with a very nice comparison viewer. They call it a compare buffer. With it, you can do a shot to shot comparison, use before and after wipes, both vertically and horizontally, and even see three shots in one view. I find all of this to be well designed and very useful. Color Finale, on the other hand, uses the comparison viewer built in Final Cut. It's still very nice, but has a bit less flexibility. For example, you don't have wipes and you can't see three shots at once. You do, however, get this nice browser for all the still shots you took and you can use that to easily compare or match shots. Here are a few general notes and a few things you need to keep in mind about these plugins. Chromatic does come with an adjustment layer. Color Finale needs to use the one you download for Final Cut. Chromatic also includes a quick denoise option. I don't find it very useful, however, considering Final Cut has a better one built in. Another thing to note is that Chromatic comes with all these different effects instead of consolidating them into a single one. For example, you have the standard chromatic grade, but then you have chromatic log grade, which is exactly the same thing, but with log footage options. Why not just put that in the same one? It's less clutter. Also worth noting, I found that in both chromatic and color finale, this floating external window is just annoying. It's just always in the way and is an extra step. I find it would work great with the two monitor setup, but with just one, you find yourself always moving it around to try to make space. On top of that, the windows are adjustable, but can't be made smaller than this. It would be way less annoying if they could. I find the best option would be to put it right in the inspector. That's something I like a lot more with the Final Cut built-in tools. Something else to keep in mind with Chromatic, which was a big problem for me, is that in several panels, if you try to move the highlights up, it goes incredibly slow and barely moves even with the slider all the way up. I'm not sure if that's a bug or if I'm not using it right, but there's definitely a problem here. Speaking of bugs, both plugins feel pretty stable and well-made overall but I did notice a few bugs and crashes. In chromatic, sometimes you get sort of a TV static in the image when you apply a correction. In color finale, sometimes the false color doesn't turn on when you activate it. Also, sometimes it crashes and closes the floating window when you try to apply a mask. In all cases, these don't happen too often and did not really bother my workflow that much but it's something to keep in mind. Price is also an important thing to consider. Chromatic comes in at $99 US. Color Finale offers two options, the basic version at $99 and the pro version at $149. I would strongly recommend the pro version, as I find the basic one doesn't offer much more than the built-in tools in Final Cut. It takes out motion tracking, sync groups, and too many other important features. So overall, I would say Chromatic is a better value, as you need to pay $149 with Color Finale to even compete. In conclusion, both Chromatic and Color Finale are fantastic tools that add important features like motion tracking to Final Cut Pro 10. I really enjoyed working with both of them. So are they worth the extra cost to add a few tools 
to Final Cut? In my opinion, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, yes, they are worth it if you do a lot of advanced color grading and want to save a bit of time by not sending your video over to the free industry standard color grading tool, DaVinci Resolve. As to which one I prefer between Color Finale and Chromatic, it's a very close call. But I did enjoy the way Color Finale is designed a bit more. I find that it feels a bit more modern, clean and more efficient. I like that it has more useful tools right in the inspector window and that the color panels are consolidated in less tabs. The whole plugin simply requires a bit less clicks to do the same things. Also, it has a few extra features I really enjoyed, like more masking options and the isolate tool. On top of that, the exposure problem with Chromatic is a big problem for me. On the other hand, Chromatic has a very nice comparison viewer, has better grading groups options, more lot options, and I really like the simplicity of working inside and outside mask with this simple drop down menu. Also, Chromatic is $50 cheaper. So overall, one is really not clearly better than the other. It's a matter of personal preference. So I encourage you to go try them out for free and choose which ones fits your workflow better. Or even if you find them worth it over the built in tools in Final Cut Pro 10. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and thanks for watching.